Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefine Horizons, and this is a short video I'm doing in Carlson Survey. I'm going to show you how to use the line and curve tables in Carlson Survey. Uh, they're actually super slick. Uh, I, I really like this functionality in Carlson Survey, and um, like most things in Carlson Survey, uh, it works really well. So uh, you can see I've got a, a curve table here that I've already drawn, so we're, we're trying to create something like this. Um, I've got a drawing in here with a with a center line alignment, a polyline, 2D polyline representing an alignment. It's what Carlson calls a center line. And then you can see I've got the curve labels in. <clears throat> so what I want to do now is uh, do the line table. Show you guys how that works. Okay, so uh, this this functionality is going to be under the um, annotate menu. Okay, and it's down here under this line and curve table menu. So the first thing you want to go that you want to do is you want to go in and set your table defaults okay and uh, so I'm not going to spend a, a huge amount of time walking you through every little thing on here but I'll just hit the highlights okay so you want to set the uh, layer for your label text and the style for your label text that is for these little labels here okay then you want to set the layer for your table text and the, the um, text style for your table text I do that here okay set your text height scalar Okay, so in this case, it's a tenth of an inch for us. And then you can give your tables titles. Okay, and then you can come in here and set up how it labels the individual labels. You can set the width of the column and the justification and the title of the column. Okay, so you can do that for both your line table and your curve table, which I have done. Uh, we want to use the horizontal distance, not the slope. You can come in here and tell it what order you want your curve elements in. Uh, we want bearings in our line table, not azimuths or gons. Okay, I am not going to have this table automatically update, but you could certainly do that, just like in Civil 3D. And I want my labels parallel to the alignment, not horizontal. Um, it would be nice if Carlson gave us a perpendicular option here. They don't, so that'd be cool, Carlson, if you can add that. Okay, and then I want to actually use a table entity. Okay, and uh, that's about it. Okay, make sure you save those settings. So I'm going to say OK. So that's just the setup. That doesn't like actually execute the command to create the labels. So now that we have our table set up, we'll go into Annotate uh, Line Curve Table, and we're going to click Line Table. We're going to create this table. So it prompts you to select the line. Now you can see I've come in here, and I've kind of tagged the segments, segment endpoints with some circles so I can see where they're at. Okay, so I'm going to click the first line, select the polyline, and then it wants to know the line number. We're going to start at 1. Okay, and then it just tells you, hey, tell me where you want your table to go. So I'm going to come over here and click that spot. Okay, so you can see it's added line 1. Okay, but it's you still have a prompt here. So now you can just, you can just move through and click those lines. That's having a hard time doing that now. So I'm not sure why. Oh, that's probably another curve. That's probably why. So I just clicked that line, and it's telling me, it's asking me, is that line number two? Yes. Now you can see as I do that, it's actually creating the, the line labels too as we go. So this is probably a little line right here. Line three. And it'll auto-increment that. So you can see it down here, it's auto-incrementing the label. So I basically just go through and click the line segments and hit enter, and it's building that line table as we go, which I'll show you in a second. And then I also need to go in here and make some adjustments to um, make some adjustments to some of my um, label placement, which we'll do here in a minute. So we're just working through that alignment, grabbing all the uh, line segments. Okay, and we're almost done. Okay, so I've got 17 line segments. You can see it's built my table here. <clears throat> okay, now, 
um, there isn't a place in the settings to set up the the, the uh, layer for your lines in your table but this is a block and if you just change that to the layer that you want your lines on it'll put your lines on the right layer okay so now I've got my uh, my curve table and my line table and uh, just to make this look pretty we'll just come in here and offset this line here Whoop. and then we can get that to line up can you if you wanted to you could explode that block and you could go in and edit that stuff if you needed to <clears throat> okay so that's how uh, line tables and curve tables work in Carlson like I said super slick now you'll notice that I've got some overlap here on some of my labels so I'm going to just make some uh, quick adjustments here to my label placement. And Carlson, it'd be really cool if the software could figure out when a curve label and a line label are going to overlap. That would be cool. So the software does not do that yet, but it would be cool if it did do it. So you're just going to run along here and check for your labels that might overlap. I think we just had some compact segments down at the bottom. <clears throat> okay. So uh, this looks good. Now in my shop, we keep our annotations in a separate drawing. So I'm going to select slim, similar and delete that. And so now I've got my, my tables and my labels are ready to drop into a sheet drawing. Okay, so uh, that works fairly slick. And uh, Carlson does a good job with it. Just a couple little things I would tweak. And uh, uh, hopefully that uh, video is helpful for you guys. Thanks for watching.